Atma Namaste, everybody. Apologize for the delay. We just finished with our Twin Hearts meditation. So Amit and I are both here. I didn't get to meditate. <laughs> Atma Namaste, Amit. Hold on. Atma Namaste, Hi, Sumi. Amit. Hi, everybody. So we yeah, just took a short invocation. I know we're running a bit late, but we start off with an invocation. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for being here with us to learn together. Let's close our eyes, connect down to our palate, inhale and exhale. Relax the body. Let's prepare ourselves for the meditation. I'm going to be muting you. Sorry, I'm going to. All right, so let's begin. Close your eyes. Feel yourself in the presence of Grand Master Chua, our beloved teacher, without whom we wouldn't be here. Let's also feel ourselves in the presence of all the great teachers, the great masters of theosophy, to all the beings of knowledge, light, and power, the angels and beings of communication, internet, our respective Wi-Fi's, and especially to the Supreme Being. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokoksvi, to Lord Maha Guruji Meling, to Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, to Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, to Lord Yehoswaba Miriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to the angels and great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, light and power, we humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, to help us all through the session, to absorb and assimilate the priceless teachings being imparted to us today. Help us to be able to make it part of our lives, to have a greater understanding, to become better instruments, to use it to heal others and to take care of ourselves as to become better instruments for God. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale, share it with your family. Inhale the energy, exhale. Share it with everyone who's joined us today. Inhale and exhale, share it with the whole world. Slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma. Namaste. So we're here today to um, go ahead with the new book. Yes, the new book for our study, which is Ethric Double. There are different versions of it. Uh, Amit and I already have two versions. Mine's American. <laughs> yes, mine is from the local Theosophy, uh, Theosophy Society, Theosophical Society from uh, Adyar. American. And <laughs> You also have the oldest versions also that exist, which, which are green and there are different colors in that as well. So to move on, uh, Etheric Double is something that you had requested for a while, but I decided to start with the textbook of Theosophy because I find the textbook of Theosophy a good base on which to work. And thank you for all of you who did join us for that particular uh, meditation. Yeah, uh, sorry for, for that uh, particular book study. So we're going to start off with uh, Etheric Double. I'm hoping most of you have a copy of this book because it would be very important. So if you have the book, can you keep it close at hand, please? So when we make references, uh, the first chapter is quite uh, short, but you'll notice we may not be able to finish it maybe even in one session. So let's see how quickly we can go through our respective uh, chapters. All right. So we'll start off with our PowerPoint. You want to go? You want to say anything before you start? Uh, um, can you tell me if the audio is okay? Um, is there too much of noise? Because we do have a little bit of traffic on the road suddenly. Can I do this? Okay. Perfect. Why is this come here? Can you get rid of it? Yes, when you move away, it will go. 
I can't adjust the screen. It's normally not visible. Okay. Yeah, but yours is visible too. All right. Can you see the screen? Can you just show me raise of hands if you can see the screen? Perfect. Okay. So here's our book. It's uh, Etric Double, Health Aura. And uh, the author is A.E. Powell. Yes. And we're going to go ahead with this. Um, just to, um, this is not textbook of theosophy. You're, you're in a whole new uh, realm of um, learning. Um, I'll, we'll talk about it in a bit, but um, when you're looking at Arthur Powell's books, they're very encyclopedic in nature compared to Annie Besson books, Charles Edbiger books and the other books. So these books take uh, some time, take some time. I remember a long time ago, um, I think Sumi was studying, what is that, solar system for how long? I don't know, many months, <laughs> nine months or something. You could have a baby in the meantime. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how long books sometimes take. And I think Master asked you also. What book are you studying? <laughs> anyway, so we'll start. Okay. So, so when Master asked us, um, we asked, we used to ask Master to do theosophy sessions. And um, we, we would ask Master, why study, for example, right? Uh, and certain aspects of theosophy. He would say his, his uh, presence is very limited. His physical time was very limited. So he, the teacher never wanted to waste time teaching us stuff already in books. But, we, but he helped us choose the right books. So you see, the 10 to 20 recommended books he gave, according to when he spoke to us, he says those 10 to 20 books are equivalent to nearly 500 books. And he said the book study also helps develop your mind and it helps you um, make what you understand. You know, when you meditate, you have inner experiences. It helps you make it um, to basically understand that you're not going crazy and to make you understand what you are seeing in the inner world. Because whether you like it or not, some of you will have inner experiences. And if you read about it, you won't be, some, some, some um, practitioners, you should actually get scared and stop practicing. So that's when Master would uh, suggest book study. You want to add anything to me? Yes. And so um, in the prep manual, actually, he, uh, he mentions there that if you look at the new age books, there are so many new age books. However, when you look at the quality of information in those books, he says, one of these books that he has recommended, say for example, is Etheric Double or any of the other books, he says is equivalent to a hundred of new age books. Just one book is equivalent to these books. Yeah, so something uh, maybe you could also remember as we're going, uh, going to go through the Etheric Double now. So when you're dealing with normal recommended books, one book is equivalent to a hundred um, new age books. But when you're dealing with Arthur Powell's books, <laughs> And Master has spoken to us about this. Um, I remember what he said. He said there are five books by Powell. Uh, when Master Chua, these five books, Etheric Body, Astral Body, Mental Body, Cause of Body, Solar System, is equivalent to reading 100, 200 books. Uh, so he says you will encounter books by Leadbeater, you will encounter books by Annie Besson, Blavatsky, Rudolf Steiner, Max Handel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he said if you read these five books, uh, it's almost equivalent to reading all of their books which I found really amazing. He says, these five books are encyclopedic in nature. So when you read these, it might take time because each page is quite substantial. So once you've studied these books, you should be able to easily uh, be able to understand the work of Annie Besant and also Alice Bailey. All right. So according, whenever, at least I in the States would speak to Master Choi, he says, just concentrate on these five books. It's equivalent to like hundreds of new age books and hundreds of uh, most of the Alice Bailey, not Alice Bailey, but Annie, Annie Besant and Charles L. Peter books. He says no comparison. That was his word. So he says, um, so when he would talk about these new age books, he says it's a thick book, 100 to 300 pages, but the whole book can be summarized to one to two to three pages only. But book by Powell, so new age books, 100 to 300 books, 100, 100 to 300 pages, the whole book is summarized to one to three pages. 
books by Powell, one to three pages is equal to one book. <laughs> okay, so he says, don't, don't waste your time jumping from one book to another, just concern the books by Powell, it's a good source. Okay, there were some other books, but this was one of his most highly recommended ones. Is there anything? I wanted to, but I suddenly lost what I wanted to say. Just cut it. Yes. <laughs> right. So um, these are the books that we will start off with. Uh, right now, we're just going to be doing uh, Etheric Double. And this is also something that is most familiar with most of us because we've done pranic healing. And the understanding of the energy body is something that's familiar to us. And so it would be better for us to start off with this book rather than the other books of Arthur Powell. Now, when I read uh, Solar System, it was an amazing book. I mean, there's a lot of information there um, that is, it, like he said, it, it's, it's really, really heavy. But there's a lot of clarity as you keep reading it and go slow with it. Don't, don't rush through these books. And that's what we want to do. And so we cannot say how long this, this whole study session is going to take. I'm hoping we're going to have enough time to try and help finish it uh, for you and for me. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on. You're not going to be seeing our faces as much as hearing our voices because our PowerPoint is going to be coming through all through the day. Yeah, so we're going to start off with the introduction. So if you can move to the introduction page, uh, there are two key points uh, that he mentions. Uh, one of the things that I found was amazing, uh, which he said, in, even in those days, he says, it's a very busy time. And I thought that was very interesting because I thought we are busy today. But he writes there, in those times, people were also very busy. And there were, these, uh, there were these various notes and various, um, uh, what do you call them? Wh which were there all over the place. Um, and to compile those notes written by different people. Scattered uh, items of knowledge. Yeah, scattered items of knowledge is what they call it. It's all over the place. But to try and get that together would take a lot of time. And so he says one of the things that he does is in this book, he says this is just a compilation of all the works that he could get especially from all the key people, some of the names that Amit already mentioned, to try and put this book together. So he says this is basically just bringing it all together so it becomes easier for people to understand. So I've written two parts of the introduction that you need to be aware of. If I can read this. It says the book has been compiled, blah, 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 by presenting information regarding the Etheric Double and other closely allied information, blah, 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 given the world through the medium of modern theosophical and psychological researchers and literature. Um, yes, that is true, but you have to understand that the book was written in 1925, or at least this is my first edition of 1925. It is. So um, you have to understand that was nearly 100 years ago. And we need to uh, learn objectively what's said there and bridge it with the new information we have here, all right? That's why later on he says, um, finally, where is that finally? Finally, the picture which the compiler presents not only displays an orderly flash and blah, 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 but it's very orderliness reveals where our knowledge is incomplete, all right? Recognizing such gaps in knowledge, other investigators might perhaps turn those attention. So many things uh, 100 years ago could not be said and could not be revealed. So this book is based on the knowledge at that time, the seven chakra system and, and various other fact, uh, facts, all right? So we'll move on because, all right, so page one. So when we talk about page one, it's basically chapter one, Etheric Double, and we're just going to be talking about um, general descriptions. Now, most of this you and I are aware of, so, People who studied this in the old days were called students of occultism. And so it says that we understand that man possess many, many bodies. It's not just a physical body or not just the visible physical body or the invisible physical body, which we call the etheric double or the energy body. But we also have other bodies, which we refer to as astral body and mental body. However, he says uh, the occult finds that physical matter exists in seven grades or order of density. We spoke about this even when we did textbook of theosophy. So to understand in the so-called physical realm, yes, we have seven categories. All realms have seven categories. However, in the physical realm, we have these seven categories. And so these uh, seven categories, as you go into the first paragraph, it says the dense body, what we in pranic healing call the visible physical body that you and I touch is composed of solid, liquid, and gas. Yes. So the first 
three, right at the bottom is reference to the visible physical body that you and I can touch. And the other four on top is in reference to the invisible physical body that we cannot touch, but we can see some of us and many of us, if not all of us can touch and feel. And that is what we call the etheric double, the en energy body. And this consists of etheric, super etheric, subatomic, atomic, and atomic. Yeah, I just finished it here. So you can go ahead. No, I just finished it here. No. Okay. So one thing I want to bring, because by the way, we both study separately, so we can give you uh, a different um, perspective. perspective, because we both think very differently. All right. So one thing I found interesting is, okay, he says you have a physical body, emotional body, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now when the word, when the author says the word expresses, right, it means to interact with, right? So that you have to understand it's older English. So it means to interact with or use as vehicle for that aspect of the soul to develop. So you have the uh, power aspect of the soul. So you have the lo love aspect of the soul. You, you, need the, you need the emotional body for the soul's love aspect to use to develop. You have the uh, uh, chit or the intelligence aspect of the soul. That soul requires you know, um, mental. the mental body to develop, to use. Uh, you, know, you, you have certain knowledge. You need certain uh, equipment to work with. So when they say express, it means to interact with or to use as vehicles for that aspect of the soul to develop. So the latter not only means, uh, it, it, it's only expresses, but also use as a mean or uh, as a means of or with the intention of evolution. All right. And then basically to just to summarize what he said, he just said, uh, you have a physical body, just like master says, you have a visible physical body. Uh, it's in the basic book, which you can see, feel, touch. And that's made of solid liquids and gas. So if you look at your physical body, the, is it solid? Yes. Do you have liquid? Yes. Does gas come out of it sometimes? Yes. So, so that is the solid liquid gas. And then you have the invisible or etheric body, which is composed of the other components, which is the etheric, super etheric, subatomic, and atomic. All right. So that's basically how it's broken up. Now to continue with page uh, one, we also try to understand what is this book going to go through, right? All throughout. So they're saying the purpose, yes, to start off with this chapter is to study, right? It, to study, of course, the etheric double or the energy body, as we call it. And in that study, we have different categories, right? So the first category is the nature of the etheric double, which hopefully most of us uh, know. The appearance, which in Master's book is also mentioned. Its function its relationship, especially to the other vehicles or other uh, bodies that we have, which we use, like uh, Amit just mentioned, to express our emotions, to express love, the divine love, the divine light, and the divine will. And so we're going to try and look at also these connections. Now, the connection with reference to the etheric uh, body or the energy body is also with reference to prana or vitality, because without this, this energy body doesn't really survive. So without prana, this uh, pranamaya kosha, as we call it, doesn't really exist uh, in the best sense. And so prana is something that we're also going to look at. We're also going to look at uh, the birth of this prana, the decay of this prana, or how does it actually change and uh, how, does, how is it also involved in, in, the, in the method of healing. And then uh, there are other phenomena that they talk about. So we'll go into that as uh, the chapters come. Okay, my turn. Um, now, number one, what is the nature or form of the etheric body? Now, what is the purpose of all of this, the etheric body? Um, according to Master, one of the main reasons is to provide a pattern for the physical body, right? All right. So um, now, what is the nature and uh, what is the function of the etheric body why do we need it right this is what he's talking about um so its interaction with the physical body is what we talk about in basic pranic healing and we also learn that the mental body generates a thought form all right like for example um where is it the second part its functions it's re yeah its relationship to the other vehicles right all right now, how does it interact with the other bodies? I found this very, very interesting because it says here, um, but I, I've written it in, or we've written it in um, 
better English or more modern English compared to what it says it's uh, relationships to the other vehicles, right? Now, when you say, what is the ethnic body's relationship to the other vehicles? You mean the, you have the interaction of the physical body is what we talk about in, in basic pranic healing. Um, but we also learn that the mental body generates a thought form. And this thought form that in, uh, it not only has mental energy or matter, but also emotional energy as well as etheric energy. All right. Which is why in the Psyche Self-Defense book, Master calls it the mental, emotional, etheric thought entity. But the question is, how does the mental body, so you're thinking of something, I thought of um, a burger, right? So when I think of something, I feel something, right? And to create that thought form required prana, so my etheric body, my mental body has to interact with my etheric body, take the prana and make that thought form. The question is, how does a mental body interact with the other two bodies and produce the thought form? So this is what probably they mean by how does that interact with the other bodies, the relationship between them. This is something that we have not studied before that detail in pranic healing. All right. How does the mechanism happen? Right. So in, an important part of self healing, for example, is also your attitude. All right. It's also your attitude affecting your health. So if you scan someone and you say that, okay, you tell them I'm old, I'm tired, their energy will, level will go down. That means they're saying something, they're feeling something, and it has an etheric effect. So there is a communication and relationship between these bodies. So that's what we're, I'm thinking we're going to be studying. All right? yeah. How does that happen? We will come to that in, in, in some time. Yeah. All right. So now, what is the relationship between the prana and the etheric body? All right. Obviously, the one reason uh, the relationship is to absorb prana. But the question is, how does the prana enter the body? How does it circulate within the body? Where does the prana come from in the first place? How is it utilized by the body? All right. And then how does the etheric body made? How does it, how does the etheric body grow? All right. So now, not only as we age, our body, grow, uh, our body, you know, ages, the etheric body also ages. So if you look at uh, uh, the, the basic chakra of a young boy, it's very elastic and it's very radiant and bright. But if you look at the basic chakra of a 60 year old, it's not as elastic and radiant and bright. So what, so what happens? as you age to the etheric body and why does so the so that would show that the etheric body also ages also how does that all happen all right so someone's <laughs> okay. all right so the question is how does the etheric body get affected as we grow older and what happens to it when we die all right now how does the etheric body get involved with transfer of energy all right. Now that is the part about mesmerism and magnetism and all that stuff. So whether it be healing energy, not only I'm talking about transfer of any energy because it's written there. Some other stuff is written there. So whether it be healing energy, sp spiritual energy is directed to it. How is it processed by the etheric body? When we use uh, the etheric body in Kriya Shakti as a medium for materialization. So what happens, right? How is it involved in the transfer of energy? When Master gives us a Shakti but uh, it's given sometimes to the back heart, uh, to every cell, but to every cell of your body, which manifests to the etheric body. But how does it communicate and how does that whole relationship happen? How does the transfer of energy happen? All right. So that's something we want to look at as well, which I hope we will. All right. Now, the question is, um, not only how is it involved, there are so many questions like, how come the etheric aura and its particles, when you do twin hearts, stretches 10 to 20 times its size without losing its shape or bursting? When we do twin hearts, what happens to the aura? If you look at the picture, when we do pranic breathing, it's supposed to go bigger than the room. Or balancing breathing exercise, it's supposed to go bigger than the room. It goes two feet, three feet. So how does this etheric aura expand without exploding? I think okay. this was uh, something that Master Cho, I remember, asked me a long time ago. He says, uh, when we say prana is much more subtle than perfume, and perfume just kind of you know, disappears in a few hours all, all around us, he says, how come your prana then stays within the body, within the shape of the body? I only asked me that question and uh, we were all at dinner and, and everybody was just looking at him because at that point, uh, it didn't strike us that this could be part of the reason. And you will come to uh, the answer in this uh, book. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, it's partially wrong based on old technology because he can't reveal it. So we'll, we'll talk about the actual one also. <laughs> So page two, I think. Again, page two. I think so. Oh, we'll have to stop and go back. Oh, what? Because otherwise this doodle will not disappear. Oh, I can remove the doodle. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to page two, yeah? And so, um, so the first thing that we need to understand in page two is that the etheric double, yes, is definitely very, very important for this physical body to survive. They actually do not uh, stay separate from each other. They're kind of intertwined or they work together, both the physical body and the energy body. And so that is something that we're going to start looking at. And so as you look at that page, as you go further, it says that uh, the etheric double, right, while necessary to the life of the physical body, is not, properly speaking, a separate vehicle of consciousness, but it receives and distributes the vital force, that is prana, which emanates from the sun. So that's where we're getting our source of prana in uh, sorry, uh, from the sun and is thus intimately connected with the physical health. That is the physical health of the physical body, right? And also we're going to talk about the chakrams or chakras or energy centers or force centers as they mentioned here, each with its own distinct function, which hopefully we're all aware of, that upon the action of etheric matter mainly, yes, uh, now you've got to remember that We've also said our chakras also have consciousness. So it's not just the aura or the energy body or the physical body that we say has consciousness. But remember when we spoke about it in, uh, in pranic healing, Master Chua says it's not just the energy body, not just the chakra that has a consciousness, but even your organs have consciousness. So within the physical body, the main vital organs, everything has consciousness. And also within the energy body, the chakras and various parts, yes, whether it's a major, minor or mini chakra, all have consciousness and we can use this to help heal the physical and the energy body and uh, we'll come to a few more in a bit I'm with you Gary. okay so um, he says the etheric body is not a vehicle of consciousness but it has consciousness I'm just paraphrasing now you have to understand at this point the concept of the 12th chakra was not allowed to be revealed so the author cannot speak much about it. But of course, today, we know that it is in fact a vehicle of consciousness. In fact, the energy of the incarnate soul interpenetrates every cell of the etheric body, as well as the physical body and all the subtle bodies. So if you look at it as an entirety, it has consciousness with the soul. But of course, on its own, it has consciousness, but it's not a... Um, it is a vehicle of consciousness, because if it was not a vehicle of consciousness, it would not be able to host the uh, incarnated soul and the incarnate soul could not interpenetrate through the etheric body and the physical body. All right. So you have to keep in mind that what was said a hundred years ago might change and the teachers might, uh, you know, hide a few things and give a different form of truth to, uh, to, to readers because this book is meant for public. All right. And to continue with the first page, he's also said, um, the body receives and distributes life force whose real source is actually from blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And um, the etheric body contains uh, energy centers. All right. Uh, which um, called chakras, which each serve specific functions. Uh, I've typed it out in modern English. So it's easier for you and you can edit your book. Um, now upon the action of etheric, uh, it says um, upon the action of etheric matter, mainly depends the memory of the dream life. What is that? <laughs> you know, I was reading it. Sometimes some of the English is so strange and the way they describe it is so strange. Um, actually, that it, he, all he's trying to say in my, I, in my understanding is that the etheric body is greatly influenced by the emotional body. That's what you're going to learn. Here, dream life basically means the astral world or the emotional world. Okay? Um, and the next one is also fairly simple. Uh, it plays an important part in determining the kind of physical vehicle which an incarnated, incarnating ego will receive. That like the physical body, okay, so it plays an important part in determining the kind of physical vehicle which an incarnating ego will receive. Obviously, because an, uh, if an incarnated ego has small etheric chakras, then the soul cannot do much with that type of equipment. If it has very, very big chakras, it can do a lot with that equipment. Okay, so this is just a preview of, I hope, what will come in the book. But we have to see what will actually be. 
Yeah, another thing to also remember that they've mentioned here when you talk about uh, the etheric body that uh, this will specially be associated, this kind of uh, work that we're talking about, the energy that we're talking about will be used for magnetic healing. Now, that's one of the old names and one of the modern ways of doing healing is, of course, pranic healing as well. And whether for the purpose of healing, it could be healing, uh, anesthesia or trance, we're going to be looking at the etheric body as well. You, where are you, Tim? Just here, I just finished it here. Okay, so I'm, I should still do that. So it says, like the physical body, the etheric body also dies and decays. Now, this concept was a little bit uh, uh, strange because <clears throat> uh, when the etheric body is, the etheric body is actually kept alive, integrated and intact to just give you the key to what Sumi was asking you. The etheric body is actually kept alive, integrated and intact by the energy coming out of the physical permanent seed. Through the life cord, it's not prana, it's not vital energy. It's a, Master would just call it, he'd say life, say life energy. It would radiate outwards and hold, integrate everything together and hold it in place. All right. Now, the thing is, at the time of death, according to what I've read, I believe the health rays droop and almost retract back into a kind of shell. Okay. I'm, I think it's either an ancient wisdom book or I think it's in this book actually later on. Now, once the physical permanency is withdrawn, the whole etheric body and aura loses its structure, all right? But the shell takes many weeks, months, or sometimes years to disintegrate because the flesh is still there. Each one is surrounded by an etheric envelope. So as long as the flesh is there, the etheric shell will be there because it has mass, all right? And it has a corresponding etheric shell, all right? Um, depending on what type of life the person has lived, it seems to basically, sometimes it takes while, uh, weeks, months, or years to disintegrate, all right? And the person um, has lived, um, you know, it, it seems to float on top of the ground where it's buried, all right? Uh, that's why it's called the church something and front of church and the churchyard goes. So it's usually floating above. So it's like an extension, and uh, unless it's cremated, of course, all right? Yes, and so I think um, in one of the books in Theosophy, they do mention that a better way when you do leave this physical body permanently rather than burial, uh, cremation or burning of the body is better. One is to help the incarnated soul detach from the body that it's so familiar with. And secondly, also for the energy body then to disintegrate faster rather than you know, uh, hanging around like a shell, which sometimes is misused. So just a reminder, which they mention uh, towards the last uh, big, huge paragraph there, that in the older books written, the etheric double was referred to as the astral body. Yes. And so it was equivalent to, not uh, referred to, but uh, it was called the astral body in the old, old books. So they say when you look at some of these books written, uh, especially when you read The Secret Doctrine and other books of old literature, you'll have to please be very clear that there is a clear distinction between energy body or etheric double and the astral body, because that was not uh, clearly defined at that point. And so if you do find uh, reading secret doctrine difficult, please uh, do make that distinction between the astral body and the energy body or the etheric double. Yeah. All right. So here I've just written uh, that the, the etheric names. body can be used to transfer uh, energy for healing or various purposes such as shielding, consecration. It's very, very complicated English there. So I just made it easier, right? I'm using pranic healing lingo. Okay, now, um, now there's a part that talks about the etheric body provides the material out of which the substance known as ectoplasm is formed. There's a whole paragraph on it, this whole part here. Uh, do you know what ectoplasm is? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ectoplasm is just cords. <laughs> it's just energy cords. Or, uh, or in theosophy, they, or not theosophy, but in esoteric uh, lingo, we call it etheric threads. In pranic healing, we call them cords. So it's also known in kahuna or Hawaiian tradition as akka threads. So it's basically saying that the etheric body forms and produces cords. 
Oh, <laughs> we didn't know that. <laughs> All right. Ectos in Greek means outside. So in exorcism, for example, or, um, uh, or in these mediums and trans type schools, they use physical cloth. All right, or dolls, etc. But they're probably just trying to recreate what they've seen clairvoyantly. So in clairvoyant, they've seen, oh, this person is carrying this person. There's a ectoplasmic link there, invisible, uh, you know, fluidic link. It's just a cord. But then they try and recreate it with uh, bed sheets and all sorts of things. So um, don't get stuck on ectoplasm. All right. Now, have you finished the? Yeah. Now, okay. So now this linga stuff. No. First, I thought linga was something else. No, it's still coming there. You finished that, right? You said this part. Ah, okay, the Linga yeah. Sharira. So, uh, about this whole Linga Sharira thing, all right? <laughs> you know, for me, Linga is something else and Sharira is body, so, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay. okay, so you have to understand, <laughs> okay? You have to understand a long time ago, before technology progressed, and the average person realized that there is electricity, it's invisible, but it exists, and it can be harnessed, converted, and utilized productively or destructively. It was very difficult to put into words uh, what one sensed or what one saw clairvoyantly, all right? And of course, when you look at clairvoyantly, the etheric body, the emotional body, and the mental body, they don't actually look like they do in books, all right? It's not bifurcated by lines, all right? Um, they actually merge and melt into one another, all right? So the idea of the illustrations is to give you an idea of their differences. It's just like, the, um, it's just like in school, when we learned that there's a forest type of uh, uh, vegetation, then there's grassland type of vegetation, then there's desert type of vegetation, and then we would draw lines. Okay, this is tundra, this is Sahara, this is savanna, this is uh, grassland, then this is forest. But actually, if you actually drive there, and if you go there, it's not really divided by a line. Like, you, okay, you're now in the grasslands and then boop, you're in the forest. It, it's gradual, right? So same thing with the, um, you know, um, with, with the etheric bodies and the emotional body and the mental body, they actually merge, okay? These bo three bodies actually merge and interpenetrate one another. The higher principle always encompasses the lower principle. So the yogis took all three bodies as one body because they were only interested in terms of spiritual development most of the time at that time so you had the linga sharira that was the basically the etheric body the emotional body mental body and then you had straight away the causal body so the way to the, the way to see it uh, only later when uh, you have really good clairvoyance you can tune into only etheric matter so only the etheric matter comes out otherwise if you just look at a person you see all three bodies it look, doesn't look like in the book where there are three circles all right, so that's why this whole Linga Sharira thing is there. So you have to understand uh, when it was, um, you, know, con you know, conceived, when the idea was conceived, and what people mean by it. All right, so we can go to page three. Oh, all right, so now we're just going to look at some names that we have for this etheric double, not just uh, with reference to theosophy, but also in other places, right? And so starting with the last line there, yes. So on page two, last line, it says, in the Hindu, Hindu tradition, I would prefer to say Sanskrit, the etheric body is referred to as the pranamaya kosha, the, ko the kosha or the body that requires prana to sustain itself. In German, it is called the doppelganger. Yes, Doppel. doppelganger. I'm not very good with accents. Uh, so that's another name for the same body that we're talking about. However, after that, it says, when separated from the dense body, that is only the energy body without the connection with the physical body, uh, it, it has a different effect, all right? And that's what Amit was talking about, the churchyard ghost or the apparition or the phantom that people talk about. So these are different names given in those days, yes? Uh, so it's literally the shell that uh, kind of is left behind when there's no longer a physical body attached to the energy body, yes? And so uh, coming back to the division between the dense uh, or the invisible and the visible physical body, every solid liquid and gaseous particle is connected to the body that you and I can touch so easily. And uh, every part of this physical body, uh, which Amit already mentioned earlier, every cell that we have, even the whole gathering of cells to create our physical eye, everything has the energy body that envelops it but it's slightly bigger than the physical form, yes? And so we know that this, this, this sheet of energy exists over everything. 
So even the tiniest cell that we have has an energy counter. Yes. And so every part, whether it's an organ, whether it's a cell or whether it's a bone, everything has a counter energy system attached to it or enveloped by this. Now, uh, this implies that it almost looks like a duplicate of the physical body, right? Because it looks exactly on it takes the exact shape of that cell, that same organ, that same uh, bone structure, or even the, the, the features of your body, it takes exact shape. And so it does look like a duplicate and therefore the name etric duple. Yes. Now we're going to go a little bit more about this energy. The size. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You need to consider, uh, by the way, doppelhanger, what is that show where they were trying to find that? They, they call them twins, right? They find someone who looks like them, but actually it's not a twin. Your twin is with you. <laughs> All right. And in this uh, stool of paddy, whatever that is, uh, they would look at the physical and energy body interchangeably. So sometimes they would use it for the physical or sometimes they would use it for the etheric. For them, it's both the same. You can't have one without the other. All right. Uh, here, when it says the every solid liquid of gas is blah, 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 is surrounded, it, as its name implies, is a perfect duplicate of the dense form. It gives the wrong idea that the, that the etheric body is a duplicate of the physical body. When in reality, it is actually the physical body that is a duplicate of the energy body. All right, and that will be spoken by him later on. But just to clarify that, that phrase. So since the physical body was derived from the etheric envelope, the etheric envelope came first, and then the physical body was derived. That's why it's like a perfect trace or carbon copy or a double. And that's why they call it an etheric double. All right, now. Um, now, there's a part that's very confusing for pranic healers. At least it confused me. <laughs> It says uh, in size, it projects about one quarter, which is one fourth of an inch beyond the skin. I, I don't know. Which is the physical body. Which is the physical body, right? Physical skin. The etheric however, aura, however, or health aura, as it's frequently called, projects normally several inches beyond the skin. And this will be further described later. Okay. Now, we always think of pranic healing that the energy body or the etheric body or the inner aura is actually interpenetrating the body and extends about five inches away from the body in a normal person, then becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, right? But here, it says that the etheric particles or the etheric body extends to only one quarter of an inch. It's like not even one inch, right? One quarter of an inch away from the body, all right? Now, uh, the thing is, in Master Chua's psychic self-help books, he says the same thing, <laughs> all right? He says that the etheric body has an, uh, uh, the, he mentions that the etheric body is there. It's a duplicate of the physical body and it, uh, you know, gives vital energy and it has an aura called the etheric aura. You have to read very, very, very carefully, okay? So when we practice, um, now, this is where it gets tricky, so just listen very carefully. Every cell of your body is encompassed in an etheric envelope. That envelope does not change in size that much, all right? But it has a voltage, all right? Now that voltage, all right, gives, a, gives off a field, all right? And that field is what you are calling the aura of the etheric body or the etheric aura or the inner aura. All right. So when the cells have less voltage or it's weak, its voltage goes down. So the etheric aura comes down. If the uh, voltage goes high, the etheric aura go the, the the etheric aura will increase in size. All right. So when we practice meditation or exercises, etc., probably every cell you can say solid, liquid, gas particle, but every cell here is easier to understand. Every cell of your body which has an etheric envelope, when you exercise this etheric envelope the quality of the energy as well as the voltage of this envelope goes higher and higher and higher. So it doesn't extend to more than one quarter of an inch because of the, uh, you know, voltage. Anything with voltage, according to the right-hand rule in physics, will have a field. And that field is the one that becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So the etheric body extends to only one quarter of an inch away from the skin. But as you increase the voltage of the etheric body, 
the prana flowing through the etheric body is so intense that the field generated from that body is what we call the inner aura. Same thing with the spiritual cord, by the way. It's just a wire, all right? It's just a wire depending on how much energy is coming in. The aura of the spiritual cord, depending on the quality and quantity of power, becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not the cord itself that generally becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. There are different levels of truth to this, by the way. It's just like you have now a 2 Mbps connection in your house. You upgrade to 1 gigabyte connection. The person is not going to come to your house and rip off the whole cord from here to there. He's just going to upgrade the system. So the same wire will have a completely different uh, uh, data processing through it and data transfer through it, which is much, much more powerful. Okay? So that's just to explain that part to you. And it says the dense uh, body and the etheric double vary together as their quality. This is just the principle of correspondence in our lingo. You exercise your throat, your throat chakra, and your etheric throat starts pulsating as well. Okay? Can I just add there? Yeah. So um, I think I'd like to also add here <clears throat> the, what the book also mentions. So when we start to refine what we take into our physical body, yes, um, then the physical body starts to becoming healthier. And as the physical body becomes healthier, the inner, the, uh, let me just call it energy body, also starts becoming healthier, right? And there is a correspondence therefore between the two. So the quality of your energy body is also dependent here on the quality of what we take into our physical body. Now, we also understand the physical body. This is not from the book, but from what Master Chua says, the physical body is not just what we take into our mouth. It's also the thoughts we uh, create, the emotions we emote. So these also will influence the energy body. So something for us to remember. All right. Um, and of course, it says the quality of etheric prana or just the quality of these particles that compose the etheric body it depends on many factors, which Master Chua has also talked about as part of preventive healing, as part of everything. But what Sumi is talking about is using the principle of correspondence in the opposite manner. So when you eat something healthy, the amount of prana utilized to digest or the physical body is less taxed. So the amount of energy increased. It's like you're conserving energy. So the uh, etheric body becomes brighter. Okay. And as the physical organs become cleaner, the etheric body will become cleaner also through uh, maybe fiber or whatever. All right. That's, that's it. And so the quality of your etheric body also depends, it says here, on the race of the person. Now, what does it mean? For example, um, if you look at someone who comes, uh, no, uh, no offense to any of them, but just say, for example, it's caveman uh, compared to modern man, because of what that caveman is going through and the kind of uh, needs he has is very, very different from, say, a modern man, right? And so the kind of food he probably takes in, the kind of thoughts he has, uh, the kind of emotional development and mental development he's gone through will also influence his energy body and the same with us. Now, this is also true for us when we are, say, for example, uh, we've lost someone near and dear to us. We get very emotional. Uh, we might have uh, a lot of um, pain and hurt, uh, sometimes even anger with that person who's left us. And so the state that we are in, Yes, uh, we may not even be eating healthy at that point. Uh, we may not sometimes even eat at all. And so that state, even in us, will start to change the quality of our energy body. And as we sit, for example, in the lockdown period, doing our meditations regularly, listening to all these um, uh, higher teachings, getting greater and deeper understanding of it, will also change our etheric body. So for those of you who know pranic healing, this is what I'd like you to do. Just scan your energy maybe before the lockdown. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about say maybe mid, uh, maybe March 15th, for example, just your quality of your energy. So just take some energy from your aura on March 15th and feel the quality of the energy. Yeah. Like you are rubbing cloth uh, or you're touching the quality of the cloth to find out whether it's rough or smooth just feel the quality what does it feel like is it smooth is it rough right and then flick your fingers and then scan the energy of your energy body right now is there a difference even with us just in these 60 plus days has the quality of our energy body changed just because of the way we think the way we feel and hopefully what we've been eating hopefully it's healthy right now Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can continue. Not for me. <laughs> but in the past few hours, uh, 
All right. The next one, the last part. You want me to stop? Yeah, about go it? ahead. Go ahead. All right. Then we'll have to stop with this. Oh, really? Yeah, we are already at 7.30 almost. Okay. Three pages. <laughs> One hour. Okay. Now, um, there are four grades of etheric matter, all right? Now, I didn't understand what was written in the book, so I'll talk about it uh, in terms of what I understood because it uh, requires maybe a degree in, uh, I forgot, chemistry a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, so let me just explain to you. Um, <clears throat> just like we know, this is my understanding, just like we know that there is white prana, okay? There's white prana called a vitality globule, right? So that white prana you see is called a vitality globule. And each particle, um, you know, um, uh, of, uh, of vitality globule has conglomeration of units of white prana, all right? So each particle of, let's say, instead of vitality globule, let's call it air prana. Each particle of air prana is made of conglomeration of units of white prana. And within that white prana, there are several pranas. That's what you learn in advance. You get it? You have the globule, air prana, you open it, you know, like an egg. There are lots of white buddies inside. You can, from the white buddies, there are several pranas that can be derived from there. So there is a different layers of constitution, constitution that's going on with this one etheric matter. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so to give you the analogy, there is an etheric body made of etheric matter. And this etheric matter is composed, if you take a globule out, is composed of various conglomeration of units of particle. And within each particle, there are several states. I hope you got it. Okay. See, just like in advanced panic healing, if we understand that white prana has actually several colors within it, if we understand the composition of these different states, what they are, what they react to, and what are they most conductive to, and how these states work, then we can use these states as mediums to enable other energies to be compatible to it. For example, certain molecules in the enteric body react to the energy currents of the earth as they have similar states. So if we knew about this, we can devise a system where when we face a certain direction and a certain current flows through that etheric body and reacts with that state or those particles, the molecules react with the energy current of the earth and this causes changes in the etheric body. All right. And, and the energy centers and the etheric centers. This is the mechanism behind feng shui. All right. You face a certain direction and suddenly certain chakras boop, 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 change. All right. The etheric body is either enhanced or reduced. All right. The Tibetan exercise also do the same thing. Some of the arhatic levels have this effect of activation as well. Using certain amount of energies, correlating them, bringing them down, changing, and then it becomes bigger, smaller, reacts in certain way. So these are basically the states of matter and which we'll learn about things. Okay, let's talk to Oh, you have some more? Yeah, we have one more. <laughs> That's page four. Okay. So there are two main functions of the etheric body. There's absorption and distribution of prana to the physical body. We'll just finish this, you know, four pages. No? <laughs> because you'll have questions. Oh, you'll have questions. <laughs> you have no I idea see. how many questions they will have. That's why I don't want to go into that. Okay. Right? All right. We finish 10 out of 16 slides. This is what happens when. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so hopefully that. And see how many questions? It's only that many. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, is that Titli? Wait. Yeah, Titli. All right, Titli, do you have a question? Sorry? <laughs> No, okay. Thank you. Just unmute. All right. So we're going to try and quickly look at your questions to see if we can answer any for you at this point. Okay, here we go. All right. All right. Uh, Atma. Okay. Atma Namaste to everyone as well. I love those type of questions. <laughs> Straightforward answer. All right, the sessions will be, if you looked at the link that we sent you, in the link, there is the live session recording. So you can go to the live session recording and listen to this one more time. Hopefully we've made sense and you can listen to it and try and understand a little bit more about what we've been talking about. So the live recording is there. If Aditya is there, if you could kindly put that down, Aditya here. Uh, where can we get a book? Uh, Neha, I'm not too sure where you're from, but most foundations used to have this book. Uh, I'm from Bangalore, and the Karnataka Foundation here 
always had a copy of this book. Several copies. They have several copies. Uh, is your office open? Mm, no. Okay, so maybe you can send an email to the Karnataka Foundation and if they are opening soon, then maybe they can courier you, you one of their copies. also online on Amazon, but there's no Kindle book for now. Okay, so you, if you are in Chennai, I, I know I know that it's uh, it's not uh, the best city to be in, but Chennai the uh, they could dunzo it to you, or if you know someone in Chennai, they can get it for you as well uh, from the Adyar Society. That's where the Theosophical Society presently exists in India. The main head office is still in uh, Chennai in the area of Adyar. Yeah, so you can get a book. All right. Yes. 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 Great. Okay. Uh, Done. Audio is perfect. Okay, sorry, we're just going to see where we have questions. Found the PowerPoint is fine. Can you take screenshots? You don't need to take screenshots, you have the recording. Yeah, you can take screenshots of this. This is nothing to do with copyright or anything. We're just trying to put information there so you have a bit better understanding. Not a problem with this uh, particular session only. But be careful distributing it. Some of it out of context will look really weird. Huh? Correct. Yeah. Don't send it to others. This is only for you to understand uh, that I agree with Amit. Yes. Voice cracking. If the video is blur, I just checked with a couple of people. Uh, I think it's the interconnection from that side. Um, so because uh, for a lot of people, it was very clear. So a layer above the burial ground is the etheric body. No, it, etheric shell. We learn about it. We learn about it. Uh, okay. Not, of course. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, the layer seen above is the etheric shell. And this linga sharira. Yeah. Uh, should refer to the physical body. It's actually all three bodies. The energy, the three types. That's what I understand. Closest to the body is dense and the rest is radiatory. Uh, doesn't work like that, Jaya. It's actually, that's why when you heal, you might not realize it, but intuitionally, instinctively, you're not going about, you see, we learned that the chakras at the end of the etheric body, right? So, and also sometimes in aura, but that's because of our intention. But uh, in reality, when you're healing the organ, if a person's aura has been person meditating for maybe 10 years, his aura is 10 meters, 50 meters, 50 kilometers more likely, then you're not going to go out of the house to heal him, right? You, you want to just heal the organ from there. So the etheric organ, the etheric body is actually there. It envelopes. All right. So thank you for letting me know that there was a change in the energy, uh, you know, earlier, uh, 60 days before and now. There's a big difference in us. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, for the uh, recordings, Godwin at 729 has given you the link so you can go there and continue to watch this if you like, if you've missed anything or you couldn't understand anything. So the recording is there. So just go to the chat, 729. He's mentioned it there. Don't worry if there are, you know, there are some uh, doodling happening on the screen, not an issue. Mental seed. Civic. <laughs> Churchyard ghost uh, is nothing to do with your mental permanent seed at all, right? Uh, when the mental permanent seed is pulled out, then you go into the causal body. So only when the physical permanent seed is pulled out or out of your physical body, the physical body is then released by the incarnated soul and then also the etheric body and it moves into the astral body. And we spoke about that also in the textbook of Theosophy. Um, Divya um, Dhananjan, if you lose a part of your body, the etheric body and the aura of that part will disintegrate. No, the etheric body does not disintegrate unless it's purposely psychically removed. Yeah, I, so we'll come to that part towards the end of the book. Uh, we do talk about someone who's lost a limb and uh, we'll come to that as well. Yeah. Okay, so there is a link here at one second. Yeah. At uh, seven thirty-one, Arthur Powell's. There's a link there to download if you want. Someone send it there. 
Mm. But uh, out of loving kindness, uh, if you're using it online because of the, you know, you don't have a Lockdown. copy, I would suggest you buy one later on. It's just a yeah. few hundred rupees. Yeah, it, it was very cheap. Mine, I can't even remember how cheap it yeah, was. Yeah, I paid $12 for this book and uh, my friend Chandan was laughing at me. It didn't even have, the Indian one had color uh, <laughs> plates and mine didn't. Anyway. It was like... You know, the, it's very funny. This book I bought on the 25th of September 2000. I've written 2K. Can you imagine 20 years later, I'm actually in the end teaching this after 20 years. So that's quite interesting. All right, where are we? How to connect to church goes to seed. Hello, Vivek, don't do that. Ah, it's a private message, sorry. <laughs> Is there a relationship between atom we study in chemistry and the atomic layer? Um, at this point, no. Right, we'll come to that. We're going to go into all those as the uh, chapters. It's just to give you an idea of the size and the, probably the subtleness. Uh, yes, we're not going to be removing the textbook of theosophy study sessions. It's going to be on for uh, definitely more than six months. Yeah, so don't worry. You have time to look at it uh, if you need to re read Is it again. Is the churchyard ghost the reason behind people? Uh, these are, by the way, this first chapter is to give you an idea of what's to come. <laughs> It's not the whole book. It's just like, you know, a, a, a trailer. Okay, okay, they want you to uh, talk about the Linga Sharira again because they didn't get that. I did already, no? Is that... This is after, after the session. Oh, we can look at the recording. Uh, the problem is, uh, Udaya, uh, it's not possible to actually Udaya. share the, uh, Udaya, sorry, it's not possible to share the PowerPoint, but if you go back to the recordings, you can. Uh, the Vimeo doesn't give you an option to also put up the PowerPoint, that's the problem. Okay, about body burial and all, we'll get to that in the book, we're just starting, share the name of the book. Um, all right. Uh, it looks like that's the end. Thank you so much for Thanks, sitting with us. I hope it's making sense to you. I know it's a little too much, right? Uh, it's, it's a bit more thick with reference to knowledge compared to textbook of theosophy. You'll see that as we go. We've done only three pages today. Usually we do at least uh, something more than that, I think. But uh, for now, thank you for being with us. Let's conclude with a short prayer. Let's do a Thanksgiving prayer. Inhale and exhale. Thank you all for joining. Let's be aware of ourselves in the presence of all these great beings, all of them who've helped us get greater clarity and understanding of the teachings. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Sweet Lord Maha Guruji Mailing, to all the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, especially to the angels and beings of Theosophy, the great teachers, the great masters, to all the beings who've helped us absorb and assimilate this knowledge. We thank you all for your patience, your love, your mercy and guidance all through the session. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments and better healers to help elevate the pain and suffering all around us and within us. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. All right. Atma Namaste, everybody. Yes. Thank you. We'll see you on Wednesday at 6.30. If I'm a couple of minutes late, I apologize. It's just winding up the Twin Hearts with Brayton vacation on the other side. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See ya on Bye. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> yes. So we're going to do it three times a week. Uh, and we'll keep sending uh, reminders on the Facebook and, of course, on WhatsApp. So you won't forget to join us. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. At for Namaste. I'll end it for everybody. That's how it works now. Mm. Bye.